pretty much only a few options for where you can sleep at night while on the road. If you're really tired or over your daily driving limit, you can just pull over on the side of the road if there's room. If you're lucky, you'll find a truck stop with enough open spaces for you to park and catch a few hours of sleep. Then there's my least favorite, parking in the back of a public lot and sleeping. The most common places you'll find truckers doing this are at big stores like Walmart. But just because it's common doesn't always mean it's safe. That being said, one of my worst nights on the road was when I happened to be picking up a large shipment from a department store in the same plaza as a Walmart. It was an out-of-state delivery that brought me near Eagle Pass, Texas, right on the border between Texas and Mexico. Because the pickup was so early in the morning, I decided to sleep in the back of the parking lot. The only upside to this was that I got to go inside and grab some food to eat. That being said, as soon as I walked out of the store, I started to regret my decision. I was walking toward my truck, and to my surprise, I noticed two guys walking out from behind the passenger side, as if they were trying to do something to my truck. I asked them if I could help them with anything, and why they were standing so close to the truck when they have a whole parking lot to be in. They didn't give me a straight answer. They basically just snickered and walked past me as if I wasn't even there. I decided to just brush it off and not get into any sort of conflict. So I got back in my truck and began eating my food as I watched a show on my phone. About an hour passed, and by that point, the sun had finally set, and I was getting pretty tired from being on the road all day. So I got ready to lay down. I made sure both the doors were locked and then pulled the curtain ceiling off the cab and in the driving compartment before laying down and going to sleep. After sleeping for a few hours, I woke up to a loud noise that sounded like it sound. I sat up and got ready to check it out when out of nowhere, I heard the sound of glass shattering. I looked up at my feet as the passenger side door of the truck unlocked and one of the guys I saw earlier that night rushed into the truck. I put my hands up to cover my face as I saw something swinging toward me. The impact of what I noticed later was a metal bar, most likely the crowbar from the back of my truck, sent a shock through my entire upper body as it cracked into my arms. I fell backward, but was quickly grabbed and pulled out of the truck before being thrown onto the cold parking lot. I looked up, but my eyes took a second to adjust to the street lights. And by the time I was able to see, the two people were standing over me. I felt the metal bar slammed down on me and I curled over, laying in the fetal position as the two guys continued to hit me. When they were finally finished, I could feel them rummaging through my pockets. I rolled to my side to try to keep them from getting my keys. But as soon as they saw I was conscious, they began striking me again. This time, until I blacked out. I don't know how long I was unconscious, but when I finally woke up, I could tell that I wasn't on the gravel anymore. I couldn't see anything around me. But as I felt around with my hands, I realized that I was in the back of my truck with the shipment. I took a second to take everything in and realized how hard it was for me to breathe. With each breath, it felt like I was being stabbed in the lungs. Before I could bring myself to sit all the way up, I felt a bit of shaking, which told me that the two guys had stolen my truck with me in the back of it. I tried my best not to move at first because of the pain that I was feeling from almost every side of my body. As I felt the truck slowly come to a stop, 
I knew that I needed to get ready for anything. I didn't know where we were or what these guys wanted. I slowly sat myself up and then managed to bring myself onto my knees. I slowly crawled toward the back of the truck. I didn't really have a plan. I just knew that once they opened the door, I needed to get as far away from them as possible by any means necessary. The moments passed, and there was no sinister grin. I felt a chill down my spine as he looked at Dad and said, You shouldn't have stopped, trucker. Dad's face tightened, sensing trouble. Before we could react, the guy pulled a knife from his pocket, demanding our wallets and whatever valuables we had. I was frozen in fear, and Dad, never one to back down, tried to reason with the guy. It didn't work. The situation escalated quickly, and the guy lunged at Dad, slashing the knife through the air. In that moment, instincts kicked in. Dad skillfully dodged the attack, grabbed a wrench from the toolbox, and defended us. It was like a chaotic dance, the sound of metal clashing against metal echoing in the night. I could see the desperation in the guy's eyes as he realized he had underestimated Dad. Eventually, Dad managed to subdue the assailant and, with a firm warning, let him go. We quickly got back on the road, shaken but alive. The incident left a lasting impression on me. The thin line between goodwill and danger on the open road. As the miles passed, Dad shared stories of the road's unpredictable nature. He emphasized the importance of caution, always trusting your instincts, and never underestimating the potential dangers that lurk in the seemingly serene stretches of highway. Our journey continued, each day bringing new lessons and challenges. I came to understand the solitude Dad faced, the silent battles fought behind the wheel, and the unspoken camaraderie among truckers on the road. It was a life of contrasts, vast landscapes, fleeting connections, and the constant hum of the engine beneath our dreams. And so, the road became my classroom, and Dad, my teacher. Little did I know that our adventures would shape not only my understanding of the world, but also the resilience required to navigate its twists and turns. Managed to wrench the door open, and without thinking, I jumped out onto the gravel. Panic engulfed me as I fumbled for my phone, dialing 911 with trembling hands. My voice cracked as I relayed the desperate situation. From the outside, I could hear the struggle inside the cab, Dad's grunts of pain, the metallic clashes, and the crazed demands of the assailant echoed in the night. The dispatcher assured me that help was on the way, but each passing second felt like an eternity. I peered back into the cab, fear and determination intermingling within me. Dad, though wounded, fought valiantly. I felt a surge of pride for his resilience. The attacker, realizing he was losing control, suddenly bolted from the truck, disappearing into the darkness. Sirens wailed in the distance, growing louder with each passing moment. The flashing lights illuminated the scene as police cars and an ambulance arrived. Medics rushed to Dad's side, and the police scoured the area in pursuit of the assailant. In the midst of chaos, Dad locked eyes with me, a silent reassurance that he would pull through. As they loaded him into the ambulance, he whispered words of comfort urging me to stay strong. The gravity of the night's events hung heavy in the air. At the hospital, I anxiously waited for news of Dad's condition. The hours crawled by, filled with uncertainty and worry. When the doctor finally emerged, his words were a balm to my soul. Dad would recover. The following days blurred into a whirlwind of police statements, 
hospital visits, and the overwhelming support of friends and family. Dad's resilience and the community's kindness became beacons of light in the aftermath of that harrowing night. As Dad mended, our shared experiences on the road took on new meaning. The once idyllic journey had transformed into a testament to strength, survival, and the unyielding bond between a father and a son. The scars of that night ran deep, but so did the newfound appreciation for life's fragile yet resilient nature. And so the road stretched ahead, winding through the unknown, a constant reminder of the unpredictable journey we call life was essential for both convenience and expanding my job opportunities. So I dedicated my weekends to learning how to drive with my dad as my patient and wise instructor. The process of getting my license was a mix of nerves and excitement. I vividly remember the day I finally passed the driving test. It opened up a new world of possibilities allowing me to take on more responsibilities at work and have the freedom to explore beyond the familiar paths of my daily routine. One evening, after finishing a late shift at Stewart's, I decided to take a different route home. The air was crisp and the moon cast a gentle glow on the quiet streets. As I drove, I stumbled upon a serene park bathed in moonlight. It beckoned me to take a break, so I parked my car and strolled through the peaceful surroundings. The park held a certain charm at night, the rustling leaves and distant sounds creating a soothing symphony. I found a bench and sat there, reflecting on the journey that brought me to this moment. From the lessons on the road with my dad to the unexpected events that shaped my understanding of the world, each experience had contributed to the person I was becoming. As I sat there, a realization dawned on me. The road wasn't just a physical journey from one place to another. It was a metaphor for life itself. The twists, turns, and occasional bumps mirrored the challenges and surprises that awaited me. And just like on the road, a blend of caution and kindness would guide me forward. With a newfound appreciation for the interconnected nature of life's experiences, I left the park that night, feeling a sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the lessons learned, for the strength gained from challenging moments, and for the continuous journey that lay ahead. From that point forward, I approached both the literal and metaphorical roads with a blend of resilience, kindness, and an understanding that every encounter, whether on a quiet park bench or in the hustle of a gas station, contributed to the rich tapestry of my personal narrative. And so I continued to drive through the open roads of life, eager to embrace whatever adventures lay ahead nodded and said he'd take me there. As we approached the turn, my instincts suddenly kicked in. A nagging feeling that something wasn't quite right. I hesitated for a moment, then politely thanked him for the ride and asked to be dropped off at the corner. To my surprise, the man's demeanor changed. He became insistent, urging me to let him take me all the way home. Alarm bells rang in my head, and I firmly declined, stating that I preferred to walk the short distance from the corner. His persistence grew, and a chill ran down my spine. As we reached the corner, I hastily exited the truck, grateful to be back on solid ground. I thanked him again, and watched as the 18-wheeler rumbled away into the night. As I walked the remaining distance to my house, a sense of unease lingered. Days later, a news report caught my attention. A truck driver, 
fitting the description of the man who had offered me a ride, was involved in a series of incidents along the same route I had taken. Authorities were investigating reports of a suspicious individual attempting to lure people into his truck. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. I had narrowly escaped a potentially dangerous situation. From that day forward, I vowed to prioritize my safety above all else. The incident served as a stark reminder that even in seemingly peaceful towns, danger could lurk in unexpected places. I shared my experience with friends and family, emphasizing the importance of being cautious and trusting one's instincts, especially during vulnerable moments. As time passed, the memory of that night became a beacon of awareness, guiding me through other challenges life threw my way. It reinforced the notion that self-preservation should never be compromised. And the road to safety often involves making difficult decisions, even when faced with seemingly friendly offers. In the end, that night became a pivotal moment, shaping my approach to personal safety and highlighting the significance of intuition in navigating life's unpredictable journeys. And so, I continued walking the roads, mindful of each step, grateful for the lessons learned, and ever watchful of the paths I chose to follow. I continued to feign calmness, engaging in small talk with the man while desperately searching for an opportunity to escape. As we drove further away from my intended destination, panic set in, but I knew I had to keep my wits about me. My mind raced with possibilities, considering every detail that might aid my escape. The truck rumbled along the dark road, and the man's occasional glances in my direction sent shivers down my spine. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was in real danger. The truck eventually slowed as we approached a desolate area, far from the familiarity of town. The isolation only intensified my unease. I subtly shifted my weight, preparing for the moment when I could make a move. The man, seemingly relaxed, continued to drive, unaware of the rising tension in the cabin. I seized a moment of distraction when he glanced away to adjust something on the dashboard. With my heart pounding, I silently reached for the door handle. As I prepared to make my escape, the man's eyes darted back to me, and he caught my movement. In that split second, fear engulfed me. He grinned menacingly, realizing my intention. With a surge of adrenaline, I flung the door open and leaped from the moving truck. The impact with the road sent a jolt of pain through my body but the instinct for survival overpowered the discomfort. I scrambled to my feet, not daring to look back. The truck skidded to a stop, and I heard the man yelling angrily. Ignoring the pain, I sprinted into the darkness, guided only by the moonlight and the adrenaline-fueled determination to escape this nightmare. As I ran, I fumbled with my dead phone desperately hoping for a flicker of life. Miraculously, the screen lit up. I dialed 911, gasping for breath as I explained my situation. The dispatcher assured me help was on the way, and I continued running until I stumbled upon a nearby house. The residents, sensing my distress, offered refuge until the authorities arrived. The police located the truck and the man was apprehended. It turned out he had a history of predatory behavior. The incident became a harrowing chapter in my life, a stark reminder that danger could manifest in the most unexpected moments. In the aftermath, I became an advocate for personal safety, sharing my story to raise awareness about the importance of trusting one's instincts and being prepared 
for the unexpected. The road, once a symbol of freedom, had taught me a profound lesson, that resilience and quick thinking could be the keys to escaping life's darkest turns. Ignoring the pain, I focused on getting as far away from the truck as possible. Adrenaline surged through me, numbing the discomfort in my hip. I sprinted towards the distant lights of a gas station, the flickering neon signs offering a glimmer of safety. Behind me, I could hear the commotion of the enraged driver exiting the truck, shouting after me. I didn't look back. My only goal was reaching the gas station where I could hopefully find help. The throbbing pain in my hip served as a constant reminder of the risky escape. As I neared the gas station, I spotted a group of people chatting near the entrance. Relief washed over me as I approached them. Breathless and desperate, I explained the situation in hurried words, my fear and urgency evident. The kind strangers offered to call the police, ensuring my safety while we waited for help to arrive. Soon, the flashing lights of a police car illuminated the night. Officers took my statement, and the gas station surveillance footage became a crucial piece of evidence. The assailant was apprehended, and I learned that he had a history of predatory behavior. In the days that followed, my hip injury was diagnosed as a fracture, a consequence of my impulsive jump from the moving truck. Yet, despite the physical pain, the incident fueled my determination to advocate for personal safety. I shared my story with local schools and community groups, emphasizing the importance of staying vigilant and trusting one's instincts. The road, once a symbol of freedom, had become a battleground for survival. The lessons learned from that night transcended physical scars, shaping my perspective on resilience, quick thinking, and the unwavering human spirit. As I continued to navigate the roads of life, I carried with me the knowledge that sometimes, in the face of danger, a moment of courage and resourcefulness can make all the difference. A fact that resonated deeply with me. The incident served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of swift action in the face of danger. In the days that followed, the local community rallied around us, expressing concern and support. The police continued their investigation, determined to bring the assailant to justice. My mom, though visibly shaken, displayed unwavering strength and resilience, standing by my side as we navigated the aftermath of that traumatic night. As the details unfolded, it became clear that the assailant had been targeting individuals along that desolate stretch of road. The community became more vigilant, sharing information and emphasizing the significance of reporting suspicious activity. The incident left an indelible mark on our lives, prompting discussions about personal safety and the need for increased awareness. Together, my mom and I attended local safety workshops, advocating for measures to enhance community security. Over time, the physical pain in my hip subsided, but the emotional scars lingered. The experience fueled my commitment to promoting safety and resilience, both within our community and beyond. The road, once a familiar path home, became a symbol of courage and survival. As we moved forward, my gratitude for the swift actions that saved me that night remained ever-present. The support of the community and the dedication of law enforcement reinforced the notion that in moments of crisis, unity, and resilience could prevail. Looking back, I recognized the transformation within myself a heightened sense of awareness, 
an appreciation for the strength found in community, and a commitment to sharing the lessons learned from that harrowing night. The road ahead may be unpredictable, but armed with these experiences, I faced it with newfound courage and an unwavering belief in the power of resilience.